Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. This is my full and complete setup guide for CMU version 1.17.4. This guide is going to give you all the best steps and settings for the best possible performance on any game you could want to play on this awesome Wii U emulator. As usual, if you're having any issues with getting this emulator set up, please leave me a comment down below or ask over on my Discord, a link to which you will find down in this video's description. For now, let's jump straight across to my desktop and get this setup guide started. As usual, all the files you require for this guide will be found down in the description of this video. First, I'm going to show you how you can update an older version of CMU if you have it already installed in your system. To do this, all you have to do is run CMU as you have before. Then if it doesn't auto-update in the event that you haven't turned on the auto-updater, all you need to do is come to the Help tab, click Check for Update, and CMU is automatically going to check for updates for you. Once you've finished updating, click the Restart button, and CMU is now going to be updated to its latest version. If you want the best possible performance, I'm now going to show you a fresh setup. First, you're going to right-click your CMU 117.4 zip and click Extract to a folder of its own. Let's drag this to the center window and open it. Next, you're going to drag and drop your CMU hook zip file down here, right-click it, and using 7-zip again, select Extract here. Once you've done this, I'm just going to move the zip file back out to my desktop, and since we're done with these zip files, I'm just going to delete them. You can also delete this web address here. These are the two patch files you require for use with CMU hook. Next, we're going to set up our compatibility settings for the emulator. Come to CMUXE, right click, and come to Properties. Once here, you're coming to Compatibility, select Run this program as administrator, disable full screen optimizations, click Change high DPI settings, and select these two tick boxes here. Click OK, click Apply, and you're now done with compatibility settings. Next, we're going to run CMU Emulator for the very first time. Once you do, it should give you a notification to download your graphics packs. All you have to do is click yes, and it's going to check your version, download graphics packs, and then begin extracting them to the graphics pack folder in your CMU root directory. Once that's done, we're going to be downloading the shared fonts that come with the usage of a CMU hook. Click download now, and it's going to download these. These are required for games like Super Smash Bros for Wii U. As you can see, you can configure all of these game paths from your general settings window. We're going to come to options, general settings and get all this set up now. Now, I advise in all of my guides that you set up a custom MLC path. The reason I do this is because it saves a huge amount of storage on your fastest operating system since I recommend using CMU emulator from your desktop. To apply this custom MLC path, you simply come to whatever storage drive you want to store your games, updates and DLCs on, create this CMU emulator backup, then create this MLC01 folder. Once it's created, select it as folder, and there you go, you can see your custom MLC path is set up. This is the location into which your game updates, DLCs, and saves will be stored. Next, we're going to add our game path. Again, mine are stored on another large storage drive. These are my Wii U games right here. Don't individually select each of your games. All you have to do is select the folder into which all of your games are stored. Highlight it like so, and click Select Folder. Once I have all this done, I'm set up with my paths and my game paths. Let's now go over the rest of the settings in this general settings window. For graphics, there's not too much we're going to be changing here, but it's very important that if you're using an AMD GPU, that you're using the Vulkan Experimental Renderer. This is going to give you the best performance on this emulator by far. If you're using an NVIDIA GPU, I'm going to be showing you some steps later on that can boost your performance almost double. For the rest of these video settings, I'd advise just setting them exactly as shown here. Next, we're going to move on to audio. We're going to be changing this API from direct sound to X Audio 2. We're going to be setting our TV device from stereo to surround, and we're going to be activating our gamepad device to primary sound driver, again leaving this as stereo, making sure to turn the volume up to a value that suits you. Once you're done here, we're going to move across to account. It is in this area that you can activate the online mode in CMU. Now be aware that in order to use online mode in CMU emulator, you need to dump files from your Nintendo Wii U. I'll have a guide linked down in the description that shows you how to do that. If you want to create a secondary account, which will use separate saves, all you have to do is click create account and you can select and use different accounts from this drop down window right here. Again, if you want to delete any accounts that you have on your system and aren't using, simply highlight the account you're using, then click delete and it's going to remove that account. That's literally as easy as it is to set up different accounts for using different saves. As it stands, those are all of the best settings in this graphics section. However, I do like to enable these two remember position boxes since it's just a nice little tooltip for the emulator. 
We're now done with this section, we can click X. Once I come out here, you can see that my games and their updates are now detecting correctly for me. In order to favorite any of your games, you can simply right click them. So for Breath of the Wild, I'm going to click favorite, for Tekken Tag, favorite, and for Smash, again, favorite. When I scroll back to the top of my list, you can see that these favorited games now appear in the games window. It is very, very important that you update your games to their latest versions and their latest DLCs for the best compatibility on the emulator. To do this, it's very, very simple. All you do is click File, Install Game Update or a DLC, and then navigate wherever to on your computer your game updates are stored. For me, mine are stored in this Wii U Updates folder. You can see here, this is my Breath of the Wild V208 update data. To install the update, come into this folder, find this meta and meta.xml file and then simply select it. As you'll see, I already have my update installed so I don't need to reinstall it again. If you are installing this, it can take a large amount of time so please just be patient and wait for the update to install. Again, for installing a DLC, it's the exact same process. Simply find your DLC folder, again come to meta, select your meta or meta.xml, then simply wait for your DLC to install. This is the exact same process you need to follow for all of your games. It is, as I said, very, very important that all of your games are updated to their latest versions, especially for titles like Xenoblade Chronicles X that require the newest update for the best compatibility with patches that enable 60 frames per second playback. Now that we've covered that, let's go over some individual game settings. You can see when you right click any game, you get access to the game directory, the save directory, update directory and a DLC directory. These are where any and all of this data is stored if you need access to it. Next, we're going to go over some game profile settings. It is in this area that you can set your CPU recompiler and threaded quantum, two settings that are very important for the best performance. For games like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, you can set your CPU recompiler mode by the infographic which you can see on screen right now. Please make sure to set Threaded Quantum to 100,000 for every game you're playing on the emulator since it can give a nice little performance boost. As I said, it's very important to use the correct recompiler mode since this will help you maximize your performance on the emulator. In this graphic section, there's nothing we're going to be changing. Further to this, we're not going to be doing anything in this controller section either since we're going to be setting up our inputs a little bit later on. Once you're finished here and have everything set, click the X at the top right hand corner to close and save your settings. In this new CMU update, we have gotten very very nice support for multi-core recompilers. Very popular games like Xenoblade Chronicles X now support a dual core recompiler, giving a very very nice performance bump on the emulator, especially so if you're wanting to use the 60 frames per second patch. As with Breath of the Wild, we're not going to be touching the graphics or controller section. For now, let's move on and take a look at how to edit graphics packs. The easiest way by far to edit them is to right click, select edit graphics packs, and there you go, you can see all of the graphics packs for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. We have enhancements, graphics, mods, and workarounds. To start things off, I would advise using the Clarity graphics pack with the Surfrost preset default. This is my favorite visual preset at the moment. Next, you're going to turn on no depth of field since it can give you a nice little FPS boost in battle. And then in this graphics section, turn on resolution and shadow resolution. Next, highlight resolution and from this drop down window, select whatever res you want to use. If you're using a very powerful CPU, you can use a much higher than a 1920 by 1080. However, for most people, a 1920 by 1080 is going to be good enough. Similarly, if you have a very powerful CPU, you can use a higher shadow preset. Next, we're going to move on to mods and activate all four of these FPS++ graphics packs. Please be aware that if you don't update your game to V208 as shown before, you are not going to be able to play this game at 60 frames per second. In this set FPS limit section, you can see you can unlock your frame rate all the way up to 165 frames per second. However, please be aware that the higher the frame rate and the further away from the 30 frames per second you go, the more issues with physics you're going to have in Breath of the Wild. There are in fact some sections that require you to lock to 30 frames per second, those are all noted in this description. So just lock to 30, play those sections, then switch back to 60 frames per second. For 99% of Breath of the Wild, you can just use 60. Next up, we're going to move on to some workarounds, specifically GPU workarounds. As you can see in all of these sections, you only need to activate these specific workarounds if you're using OpenGL or Vulkan. For example, if you're using an NVIDIA GPU and OpenGL activate these two, then also these two graphics packs here. It's very important that in this workaround section you only activate the packs that affect your own specific GPU, be it Intel, 
AMD or Nvidia. In the event that you're using a Vulkan, all that you have to do is disable any OpenGL specific workarounds and enable this grass swaying Vulkan workaround, or if you're using an Intel iGPU, enable the Intel GPU shadows. Since I myself use OpenGL, I'm going to activate these OpenGL specific graphics packs. Once you've activated anything you require and all of the graphics packs I've already shown, you can click the X button in the top right hand corner and then close this graphics pack selection window. This is the exact same process you follow for every single game on the emulator, simply right click, edit graphics packs and do exactly as I've shown. For the likes of Xenoblade Chronicles X, it does have a lot of mods but most of them are just cheats or modifications to the game. I would highly advise just using resolution and then activating the 60fps graphics pack to see if you're able to run this game at 60 using the new dual core recompiler compatibility. As per usual, if you have any graphical issues, simply activate the workaround graphics packs for this game. Once you're finished with setting up the graphics packs, again click X and close this window. These settings should now be saved. As I've already said, this new CMU update has given us a very nice stability improvement to multi-core recompilers, so it's very important that you test out all of your games with a dual and a triple core recompiler as well as a threaded quantum on this new CMU update. Next up, we're going to be setting up our input configuration to do this select options, then input settings. While this all may look very complicated, it's actually very simple. Under emulated controller, simply select Wii U gamepad, then select whichever controller API you wish to use. For me, it's going to be X input, I select it, then select my controller from this drop down window. All you need to do next is set up your input mapping. For this blow mic button, I usually set this to the F key on my keyboard, I also make sure to not map anything to this show screen button. You can click this additional settings option to also display the rumble for your controller. Personally, I use a wireless controller, so I set rumble to zero just to maintain the battery life on my pad. Generally, you should leave a button threshold as it is, but you may need to change the dead zone on your controller. For example, if you have any drift on either of the thumbsticks on your control pad, you are going to need to adjust the dead zone on your selected thumbstick so that it doesn't activate or isn't showing up as being activated as red. Since I myself don't have any issues with dead zones on my controllers at all, I'm going to in fact lower this to a value of around 10% since this gives me much more accurate movement of my thumbsticks on my own specific controller, a DualShock 4. Once you're finished with any settings, come to Profile, apply a profile name, then click Save. You should see that this profile is now there in a loadable form. Now, if you're going to be playing any multiplayer or couch co-op games, it's very important that Controller 1 is always Wii U Gamepad, and any additional controller after this is mapped to the Wii U Pro Controller. Again, to reiterate that information, always make Controller 1 the Wii U Gamepad and every single additional Gamepad the Wii U Pro Controller. Before we move on to performance optimizations, we have one last section to look at, this debug tab. Now, in this custom timer section, you are going to usually leave this at CMU default. However, if you wish to use these speed timers or speed multipliers, you should set this to QPC and then you will be able to use any of these multipliers for game speed. On top of this, you should also set your MM timer accuracy to one millisecond. I have found that setting it to one millisecond can help with emulator stability and performance. Final setting we're gonna be looking at in this debug section is use CMUHook H.264. While not required, using this setting can give you a better video quality in games like Super Smash Bros and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. However, if you're using this setting and experience stability issues, especially when booting games, please just leave it as disabled. Otherwise, you can turn it on for games like Breath of the Wild, where it should have absolutely no issues at all. One game that seems to be problematic with it is Super Smash Bros, so please just be aware that this can cause some issues. In relation to settings within the emulator itself, this is pretty much everything you need to change. However, we can drastically improve performance even more, so let's do that right now with some GPU, CPU and RAM optimizations. First things first, we're going to close everything, then right click on your desktop. Next, you're going to select NVIDIA Control Panel, then wait for the window to open. Once it does open, you're going to be coming to Adjust Image Settings with Preview, then select Use the Advanced 3D Image Settings, selecting Take Me There. Once here, we're not going to be changing global settings since these don't affect the emulator. We're going to be using Program Settings, come here and select the Add button. In our next window, you want to select Wii U Emulator. This is going to use the CMU version we've just set up. Highlight it, then select Add Selected Program. 
Next, once it is selected and shown here, scroll down to the bottom of your window. You want to set vertical sync to off, triple buffering to on, threaded optimization to on, scroll up a little bit further, set power management mode to prefer maximum performance, then set your OpenGL rendering GPU to your actual NVIDIA GPU. These two settings here are the most important by far. Threaded optimization can give you up to 30 to 50% better frame rate in games like Breath of the Wild that are very demanding on your CPU. Once you have made any and all of these changes, remember to hit the apply button. You are now done with GPU optimizations for your Nvidia GPU. Our next optimization step is to set up a page file or a virtual memory pool. To apply this, you need to open your Windows control panel. All you have to do is search for it in Windows Search, select it, you're then going to come to System and Security, System, then in here you're looking for Advanced System Settings. It is this Advanced section performance tab we're looking for. Again, click Settings, then come to the Advanced tab again. You can see here that a paging file is an area on the hard disk that Windows uses as if it were RAM. This is what we're going to be applying. Now, as you can see here, I have mine applied on my fastest SSD. However, I would advise not using something as large as 15,000, simply set it to 10,000 megabytes. Be aware that this is going to use 10 gigabytes of storage space on whichever drive you set it on, so please make sure that you have that storage space available before applying it. If you've never applied a page file before, your system should now prompt you to restart. I am not going to restart right now since we have a few more steps for optimization. We'll restart at the end of this video. Again, hit apply, hit OK, and then close all of these windows by hitting OK. As I said, I'm not going to restart just yet since we have a few more steps for getting the best performance. The next thing we want to do is apply some power profile settings. To do this, right click your Windows icon, come to power options, then click additional power settings. You want to make sure that you're using the high performance power mode. We do this because when coming to this plan's advanced settings and looking at its processor state management, you can see that it is going to make sure that your CPU at all times is using the most power it can possibly be using making sure that you will always get the best performance when using this power plan. While yes, it can use a little bit more power, it is by far the best way to get the best performance out of your system, especially so if you are a laptop user. Once you've applied all of these GPU, RAM and CPU power optimizations, please remember to restart your PC if you need to do so, otherwise you now have all of the best possible settings for the best performance and stability on CMU emulator. Hopefully everything I've shown thus far has been clear and concise. As always, if you have any issues at all, don't be afraid to leave your comments down below and I'll answer you as quickly as I possibly can, or head on over to my Discord server and ask any questions about game compatibility or the emulator that you could have over there. That's gonna be it for this CMU setup guide. Once again guys, thank you all very much for watching. Remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.